And how delicately did he play that shot? Yes, it's gained him six points and maybe a red as well. Yeah, that's a terrible escape from Mark Selby. He'll be disgusted with that one. That was a big target side of the pack. And for him to have hit the wrong side of the pink, that was a big misjudgment. Very unlike him, for sure. The chance for Ding to get in and build something sizable. Well, he could go straight into them here. Yes, he could play for the red behind the black. And the way that started off today, it was in at the red's first chance they got. And that's a great split. The black available to the right corner. Six. And it could be available to the left corner. No. Looking at that, it's not available to the left corner. It was this kind of scenario, though, where Ding did some major damage against Ronnie O'Sullivan so often. Seven. And, of course, he plays this break in the comfort of knowing that the worst that can happen is that he'll finish at four all. Yes, he desperately like to get onto that red behind the black. That's the one that would leave the black going into both pockets, but give him the chance to make a big break. That's the one he's played for. And now, well, he's got a great chance. Wow. Nice angle on the red to come out for the black. Thirty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Now he could play the cannon to the two reds above the black. Because those four reds there surrounding the black are all in awkward positions, but if he could get the cannon to the red directly above the black, that would leave him on the red to the left corner with everything easy around the black. It's a little bit of a risk, this shot. And he might feel that he doesn't want to take it. Well, he did, he took it. And he might just be on a red to the right corner and it certainly opened things up that would have liked it full in the face. But it's okay, he's back in prime position. Twenty nine. Thirty-six. 
37. And again, he'd like to have been straighter on the black there. This is the bust into the pack. And it was good to see him being so positive. And it's looking like it's going to win him this frame. 45. A good play for that second red above the black. And if he's not, he's a little bit too hard. He's on the other one. 52. And that looks just right. 52. Three consecutive half centuries now for Ding. But he wants many more. Fifty-three. <coughs> Sixty. Sixty-one. Well, this is the result of playing that positive shot into the pack of reds, spreading the reds all over. But he's picked them off nicely. <coughs> he's had to play some delicate cannons. 68. And now with this red, he's going to have a two-frame lead. 69. This is unfamiliar territory for Mark Selby 76. this year. He's dismissed his first three opponents. Fergal O'Brien won just two frames, Zhao Gadong just six. Before that masterclass, a near perfect display against Marco Fu, who won just three. And Ding Junhui has emerged from a sticky spell after the interval to put together three straight frames and apply it some overnight pressure to the defending world champion. 88. Already his best break of the match so far. Tremendous queuing to keep the century break on the cards. Yeah, what a great shot that was. Hampered over the red. And that was played to perfection. Great pot and position. 97. Come on, Ding. What a way to finish what has been a compelling first stanza in this fascinating semi-final battle. They traded blow for blow before the interval. Things got a bit bogged down thereafter. But Ding Junhui has dug deep. He's shown admirable staying power in this mini session since the break. And he's come out on the other side with the old fluency well and truly back. 110. 
And Mark Selby will offer his hand, knowing that for the first time in this championship, he's feeling the heat, because Ding Junhui has recovered from slipping 3-2 behind, and it might have been 4-2 to put three on the bounce together. And he emerges with a 5-3 overnight lead. That's a terrific start for Ding, who you'll recall was 6-0 down in last year's final.